Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today I've only got two stories, but they're huge and basically give us a serious glimpse into tomorrow's stream. But first, we're less than 1,000 subscribers from that 100,000 subscriber mark. It's incredible, and I'm so excited to see how far this channel goes. And don't forget that when I get there, I'll be doing a giveaway, so make sure to subscribe today. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, the final specs for one of AMD's upcoming Navi GPUs have leaked out. It was originally reported by Video Cards, which is probably one of the most trustworthy sites for leaks, and they were able to get a hold of what they believe to be a slide from AMD's presentation for tomorrow. The slide is on the Radeon RX 5700 XT, and as you can see, it comes with 40 compute units, to which AMD confirmed that each CU still comes with 64 stream processors, so that puts it at a total of 2560 cores. As for the clocks, it comes with a base clock of 1605 MHz and a boost of 1905. What's interesting is that it also lists something called a gain clock, which is 1755 MHz. Now, we've never really seen anything like that before, but if I was a betting man, I'd say it's likely in reference to the average clock speed the card can get while you're actually gaming, and therefore using the vast majority of its resources. The boost clock, on the other hand, is probably the maximum clock speed it can get to, period. As far as performance, AMD has it rated at 9.75 teraflops. Of course, because this is ultimately a brand new architecture, that measurement is really hard to compare. Just as Nvidia can have lower teraflops of performance yet still get just as many frames, this can't really be compared to past GPUs or Nvidia's cards. Finally, it comes with 8GB of GDDR6, and I will say that we mostly saw this coming since AMD needs faster RAM than GDDR5 and HBM2 is simply too expensive. I also think that with it being just 8GB instead of say 10 or 12, AMD is likely targeting a good price to performance ratio in the mid to high end. I mean think about why Radeon 7 is so expensive, yet it's still able to get roughly the same price to performance as the 2080, though of course without any tensor cores. Basically, with much less and much cheaper RAM, they can likely bring the price down by quite a bit. I mean imagine how much cheaper it could be if we eliminated HBM2 on Vega 64. Basically, a lot. Of course, we'll have to wait and see to be sure. Lastly for today is a huge surprise that's once again from video cards, and just like the previous story, it comes from a slide for AMD's upcoming E3 event, but this time, video cards was able to verify the authenticity of the slide, so it's pretty much confirmed. Oh, and I will be streaming the E3 event, and based on this, you clearly want to be a part of that, so make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I go live. Anyway, on to the slide. As you can see, it's of a 16 core behemoth of a CPU, which confirms the previous video I did declaring that such a CPU did in fact exist, much to the dismay of some of the comments. The only difference is that while that one was nothing but a benchmark that was likely done with an engineering sample, this is the final product, and it's so much better. As you can see, the chip is a 16 core 32 thread CPU, and it comes with a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a boost of 4.7. And yes, this is likely a single core boost, but pulling this off while maintaining the rest of the cores and with the superior IPC is incredible. Plus, if previous generations of Ryzen are any indication, along with quite a few rumors, Ryzen will likely be able to get most, if not all, the cores to a similar clock. This also further proves the possibility of Ryzen getting near 5 GHz. With that said, AMD's boost technologies are really great, but with decent liquid cooling, some, if not all CPUs, really may be able to get to 5 GHz on a single core. Oh yeah, and they did it all with a TDP of 105 watts. And the last thing to notice is that they're calling this a gaming CPU, which is a little wild. Obviously with it having a higher frequency it can help, but typically AMD wouldn't call it that because the cost of the unnecessary cores outweighs the tiny difference in clock, especially when the other ones can likely overclock to the same frequency. I don't know though, maybe, just maybe, there's something else that sets it apart. Of course, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, and while I am certainly excited, I also do wish to encourage at least some reservation. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for a 16 core CPU with some serious clocks, or do you want better GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.